They say it's insane to blame vanity for assumptions. Subjective presumption wrongly categorized. Thus my sound demise is the world seen through your closed eyes. And so I write of what I see, but prescribe it to reside in my cranium confines, for here alone I know my words are defined. I, in consultation with myself, have been nurtured to naturally mime. Why doesn't he speak? He doesn't respond to anything. All he does is laugh, this utterly insane laugh. <laughs> Your husband has been completely overwhelmed by the absurd. The, so he is not able to communicate in, in the, the traditional sense. So uh, instead, he, he can only speak in the language of the witness, for he has, he has gone so far into his own mind that escapes the observer uh, and that is precisely where you must go in order to, to, to bring him back. Into himself? Yes, into his mind. You must display to him that you understand his perspective absolutely. Then and only then, then hopefully he will come back. And how the hell am I supposed to do that? <laughs> <laughs> there is only one way to break the laws by which we abide. You don't know? You must go back the way you came. One more thing. When you are inside, you will see a projection of sorts. A, a projection of himself. This will show you his his, his personal experiences. This will help you decipher the key to his subjectivity. You know? Take this key. But be warned. His reality does not follow any sort of chronological logic in the same way that ours does. Don't be too weirded out, babe. Capish? I have degree in ultimate mystery. <laughs> Does it seem rough? It seem rough. But in an illogical world, illogical notions are the only rational ones. Is that contradiction? Why, yes, it most certainly is. I have three shows. Make sure you watch or you listen very closely. You might miss it if you're not careful. Oh, I really do hope you can read between the and the line. I walk an eternally obsidian night with merely the faculty of torchlight taken from the mortuary to awake forever in flux moving forth, unable to shine vision upon the same sight twice. Such limited spectrum, a myriad of pitfalls and wonders never to be stumbled upon lie in the ever-increasing obscurity of this darkness expanse, battery life waning. Torchlight, the tender flickering of a flame soon to be tripped up for the last time and all will become the same. Eagerly, I now pace with meagre view, for soon what is blindingly bright will be snuffed. Is it not better without this slim rage to end change? When vision ceases to exist, no longer shall thought of what I am incapably built to see mould at my brain, deranged and lame. The day I may rather something from the real into the world. Introduction of shape began now. Senses and signs and form of the soul could not bring. This tight rope tied for time. 
from whence I tumbled, I tumbled. Let's one measure how far the first mold bent its golden tether. Can you read? Do we? Do we? Do we? Do we? Is it fear, my love? Is it fear of what you cannot know? Stop this state of trepidation. I need you. It seems we are in the same boat, but entirely different seas. I look up to the heavens, speaking to the mute, myself in the sky above, impishly waltzing over the moon, playing fate's flute and whistling to the tune of my doom. I sink to a kneeling plea to examine his imaginary sky key, a padlocked Pandora's box where the cipher is lost. I am forced into logical vice of oblivion and once again conceding to a dark and stagnant sea, shunned from the start, a cold shoulder from this inarticulate dancer. By contemplating choreography, perception of connection is severed as the fickle musician frolics, lacking the courtesy of an answer and eclipsing the contented sun in sardonic consolation for my anguish. Hence, rather than fruitless attempts at conversation, I lend an ear and listen to the melody of an electrical impulse, shocking the absurd nerve by all that is false. What is this strange place where I now found myself ensnared within unknown to our sphinx-like time, writes riddles for fun, whose origin is dangerous and its end remains forever unsung. Again, ask, can you read between the end of the line? Is it a sign from God that you want? That's unreasonable. Stop trying to judge what's inscrutable. If we do not judge, ourselves is destroyed. Tick-tock, tick-tock, only one who's so left. Vacant seat is fleeting as an adjacent sitter sprawled out, depleting our freedoms, then promptly leaving. I ask the sitter, please, stand your ground. I ask the seat for a glance of the profound. Wind is caught up elsewhere inside, the same domain as all outsiders, where raging flames dissolve heat and cold by the sitter's bold decision for which the many critics were met without heed. Their lack of difference it did bore, and so the sitter did propose. What is the throne's purpose, if not to be occupied? Aghast, they endeavoured to recoil, but as utter vacancy ensued, like multiple personalities, they could not escape far enough to pass the blast radius of a stubborn heart. And so the sitter, though they clapped, was not met with standing ovation. I'm close to evanescence. Can you see my perspective? I ask now, for the last time, can you read between the end of the line? I think I get it. You don't need me to understand your complete perspective. You need to open up to different perspectives. <clears throat> Amen to happening for a reason. For I am not big nor small when one probes both out to the farthest reaches of space and into the tiniest matter of their cells. Each is equal in size, deliberately placed. As your bright and tiny spark lights the traveler in the dark, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. My love, although I am unfulfilled by the fragmented gist, you are a truly humbling guide through the mist. Mm -hmm.